The first task on EVA3 will be to, uh, for Bob to connect um, fluid QDs like we see here, or fluid quick disconnects. Uh, Bob and Nick will both start out outside the joint airlock once again, and they'll translate down to their work site. Uh, Bob will revisit the ammonia jumper work site. So Bob will be opening up uh, the redundant loop or the second loop uh, for ammonia. This is what we refer to as loop B. Uh, we want to make sure that everything goes according to plan when we open up loop A on EVA2 before opening up the second loop on EVA3. And once Bob throws all four bales on the fluid quick disconnects, we'll have two redundant systems. He'll close up the thermal blankets and then he'll disconnect one of the heater cables that Nick connected during EVA1. Now that Node 3 is activated, this is no longer required. Uh, he can now uh, reconnect to airlock shell heater power uh, where we temporarily borrowed power from on EVA1. While Bob is performing this task, Nick will be connecting some heater cables for the pressurized mating adapter number three. Between EVAs two and three, a cupola was relocated to the Nader port on node three and PMA number three was relocated to the port end cone of node three. Nick will be mating these heater cables so that PMA three can be used for stowage. He'll have a series of bolts that he needs to release in order to free that cable and then he'll be borrowing power from node three. From there, Bob and Nick will both translate down to the final home of the cupola and will move a thermal blanket that's no longer required after the cupola has been relocated. You can see this is a fairly large thermal blanket. It does come apart in two pieces. They'll remove uh, one half at a time. There's actually a portion of the blanket that covers each window shutter on cupola here you can see Bob rolling up one of those covers. Once they get all six of those covers rolled up, they'll then remove one half of the blanket, fold it up, and stow it into an EVA bag. Although it may not look like it, um, dealing with these thermal blankets is one of the more taxing and hand fatiguing tasks, but uh, again, Bob and Nick have worked hard to develop a technique that works very well. Here you can see I'm putting the finishing touches on uh, getting that blanket into the bag. Nick will then release launch restraints on the window shutters. Uh, these launch restraints were put in place uh, to protect for launch loads, but need to be removed in order for the cupola shutters to be open for viewing. There's three bolts on each of the seven shutters. While Nick is doing that, uh, Bob will be installing on-orbit installed worksite interfaces, or WIFs. Uh, these are sites where crew members can install portable foot restraints uh, if needed for specific EVA tasks. So here you can see the location for each of those three WIFs or worksite interfaces. Uh, Bob will also be installing um, some more handrails uh, these handrails, again, could not be installed because they interfered with the payload bay envelope. Uh, there you can see four of the handrails that Bob is going to install. Here's the fifth handrail. Uh, each handrail is secured in place with two EVA bolts. Uh, once both bolts are driven to uh, the appropriate torque, uh, the crew members are then allowed to translate onto these handrails. Here you can see the sixth and final location for the handrail that Bob's going to install. Once the handrail installation is complete, uh, Bob will head back down to the ammonia jumpers and take some closeout photos uh, to verify that we have enough clearance for the new module that's going to be arriving on the final shuttle mission. After that, Bob and Nick will meet up on node one port. Uh, they'll route a fiber optics video cable that's going to run from S0 over to the Russian segment, uh, which will eventually be the home of a, a new base 
for the space station arm. Uh, this cable will provide video to the arm uh, when it's at that base. See that we have a rather lengthy cable. Uh, Bob is going to be uh, connecting his end to SC rail. He'll actually make the connections. And here in this video, you can see him using a what we call a wire tie uh, to secure the cable in place. And he's working here in an area we call the rat's nest because of all the cables that already exist in this area. From there, Bob and Nick will move to their final task. Uh, this task is actually what we call a get ahead that will only be performed if we have sufficient time at the end of this EVA. Uh, they'll head up to the flex hose rotary coupler and they'll release a series of uh, clamps that we call P-clamps because of their shape. Um, if this component ever has to be changed out in the future, releasing these clamps will save a significant amount of EVA time. Here you can see one of the clamps that the crew members will release. Nick will be working on the starboard side and Bob will be working on the port side. From there, both crew members uh, will start to clean up their work site. They'll head back in uh, to the station via the U.S. Joint Airlock and that will complete their third and final EVA.